Hello, hello, this is Joe from Nerd and Creo. We are doing another deck check-in. We're looking at one of my older decks here. Kind of older. Averna the Chaos Bloom. So I really like this one. And we are reviewing decks on this. And this, uh, this is another one of the decks I first constructed a few years back. Averna is an interesting commander. Uh, yeah, and she's a ramp commander. Very much about ramping, which is always a welcome mechanic, I think. She is not the most favored, rated at 384 on EDH Rex. So she is down there a bit for sure. This build is focused on casting big spells to get the most out of the cascade mechanic. So let's take a moment and talk about her. So she is only three CMC, not bad. She is teamer, so that's green, blue, red for a 4-2. As you cascade, you may put a land card among cards exiled um, among exiled cards onto the battlefield tapped okay so it does have to enter tapped that's something to consider right if you're going for a basic land or something well maybe you should take not a basic land and that comes brings us right to our second point from all of the exiled cards right especially you might when you cascade you can only cast something that is a lower cmc so, yeah, if you get a whole bunch of cards that are higher CMC than your Cascade card, or even equal, it'll just keep going through the deck until it finds something that is lower CMC. That's very useful. And, yeah, out of all of those cards, you're going to, like, say, oh, there's maybe four lands, let's say. Which one do you want? You pick one. You don't just take the first one. You get to choose. So if there's two basic lands, don't take those. Take one of the other two right whatever mana fixing you need or things like that you can always get what you need is the important thing so yeah T this is a teamer commander so this also helps complete my color challenge that i'm doing here so i've decided to try and complete the color challenge between my uh deck check-in so this series and my budget deck text i'm almost done already so yeah we've got uh mono colors black red and then we've done all the dual colors actually and then so yeah we're on to our uh we've got naya lots of naya ones because of my lame joke i like to make uh esper gunned we did last or the last uh deck tech it was about that and yeah we also have uh wooberg and our first four color we did with um what's it called yeah tiller um no i can't even oh oh sorry yeah we got jess guy also your right we did your as well which is not popping up for some reason in a way your is done so yeah this is on here uh it's a big help actually teamer is one of the last um we're about halfway through the tricolor ones then, so that's not bad. Okay, on a final note, remember, yeah, the, uh, the land does come in tapped, and you don't have to take the first one exiled. As I just said, that's very, very important on this commander, though. The When you're cascading cards, you have to take the first one you can. For choosing the land, you don't. So this works very different from Cascade. So it can be a little confusing, I think. As with the previous Alesha deck, I've included a link for my deck and a list for the budget version. So we've got two really here. We've got my one, that's around 160, I believe. And then the budget one, that's under 45. I think it's under 40 now. So I did have to take out a fair number of expensive cards for the budget version, but I was able to keep at least similar functions that should keep the deck working. So I, it was kind of tricky at some points, but yeah, try to keep at least similar functions going so it's not too far off. Anyway, yeah, the original deck price is 164.25, and the budget one is 39.03, under 40 bucks. Not too bad, honestly. Again, this is an actual deck, and yeah, I've posted both my deck and the budget version on moxfield.com. That'll be in the description, and um. Yeah, I'm covering primarily the cards that are in both decks. 
right? So here I'm going to talk really not all about one or the other. I'm going to do the ones that I have in both decks. And at the, in the final section, I'm going to talk about suggestions. We're going to look at some of the cards that I took out and replaced and what I replaced them with and why. Mostly just price tag, frankly, but anyway. All right, so how Cascade works is really important for this commander, right? There's a new basically version of Cascade. I always want to call it Explorer. It is not Explorer. It is Discover, right? It's called Discover. Explorer sounds more like the correct thing to me. I don't know why. Anyway, so remember that Cascade, it will always cast, you'll start exiling cards when you cast a Cascade card. You'll exile cards until you find a lower CMC. Whatever it is, lower CMC, it's getting cast right away, right? Also, What's very important to remember is that this is a cast trigger, right? Cascade is a cast trigger. So if I cast like a creature that has Cascade, let's say it's seven CMC, it will go find a six. If they counter the spell, doesn't matter. They need to counter the ability, right? So countering abilities is very important for like holding this deck up. If they can't counter abilities, frankly, then you don't care because it's not gonna slow your deck down a whole lot. There's another kind of advantage there. Star card. So this commander is all about getting that extra value out of Cascade. So this deck will Cascade frequently, which will give you ample opportunity to get more mana from those big spells. So we're getting more mana, we're ramping, and then we're going to get big spells to help us ramp more to like, yeah, keep casting them. Basically, you're going to have a really big board very quickly is the idea. Being able to cast zero cost spells ensures your lower uh, cost cascade spells are very useful and more likely to hit lands, right? So the lower the lower uh, cascade, so we've got a cascade that are 3 CMC and 4 CMC, meaning that they, can, they have to hit something that's 3 or even 2 CMC to be able to cast it. So those are going to... Go through a whole bunch of cards. Remember, anytime you get something with a higher CMC, it just keeps going. It's going to keep going straight through those cards. And because you're like not casting a bunch more cards and stopping your cascade, you're going to keep hitting more and more cards, which means more and more lands, which means more and more selection for what you put into the battlefield tapped. So very, very useful. High CMC, first up. Omnath Locus of Rage. Mm. So, yeah, seven altogether. Also, Landfall. Landfall is very important in this deck. It's not a primary mechanic, but I do have as much Landfall as I could like fit in easily. Uh, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, put a 5-5 red and green elemental creature token onto the battlefield. 5-5s five are not messing around, right? They're not. So whenever it or another elemental you control dies, Omnath deals three damage to target creature or player. So you're going to make all these five fives, and if the five fives die, they're going to take, th yeah, you can do three damage to target creature or player. Whew. Apex Devastator. This used to be a very expensive card, and now it's actually pretty budget. Um, well under the $5 Anyway, so maybe not my two dollar range, but yeah. Uh, probably because, well, two reasons. First of all, uh, Discover exists now, so it's kind of like an upgraded Cascade. And secondly, I have this, so it is much cheaper. The price dropped because I own it, which is usually how it works. Anyway, 10 CMC with four Cascades. And remember, whenever it Cascades, it doesn't like go down. It's not like the first cascade is nine and then eight and then seven, six. No, no, no. It is nine. Every time it will cast something, it'll auto cast something for nine. So if you cast Apex, Devast or Apex Devastator and then Omnath is next, you cast Omnath. Also, with each cascade trigger, you can put a land in, right? So yeah, this would mean like cast four things and potentially get up to four lands into the battlefield. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Annoyed Altasaur. This is 7 CMC, 5 green green. Reach, Trample, and Cascade. The Reach is nice for sure. Ethereum Horn Sorcerer. Uh, 4 red, 
uh, sorry, blue red. And for one blue red, you can return him to his to the to your owner's hand. Put him back in your hand anytime you want, and then cascade. So you can cast him, put him back in your hand, cast him, put him back in your hand. Just keep repeating over and over. It'll uh, be pretty useful, especially if you get some of your uh, high casting cost synergy out there. Maelstrom Wanderer. Okay, so this is five and then Teamer, so green, blue, red. Creatures you control have haste. Haste is great if you're going to be busting out a lot of creatures very quickly. Haste is something you really want to have. And this has Cascade, Cascade, so you can Cascade twice. This deck does have a lot of ways to like, put creatures back into your hand as well. So you can potentially like do that where you cast it, get your Cascade. Wait to next turn, put it back in your hand, cast it again, get your double cascade, or even quadruple cascade. Oh. High CNC synergy. Okay. Uh, emoti. Emoti? Celebrant of Bounty? Sure. Uh, three, green, blue. Not cheap for a three, one. She does have cascade and spells you uh, cast with mana value six or greater. Have cascade. So even if they already have cascade, they get another cascade. So yeah, your Apex Devastator, or Apex whatever it was named, um, has four cascade triggers, it's 10 CMC, so if this is out, you get another cascade trigger. So it's gonna be five cascade triggers. <sighs> Rick's the Sudden Storm. Uh, three blue blue, flash flying for a four or five elemental, and Spells you cast with convert a mana cost 5 or greater, cost 1 less to cast and can't be countered. Can't be countered, very nice. Cost 1 less to cast, amazing. Right? You're going to be able to like keep casting your things, and that cost reduction doesn't matter. For the cascade, you're still cascade, keep cascading for the same value, so you can kind of turns it into Explorer, basically. Alvanic Giant. A three and a blue also has an adventure. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Whenever you cast a spell with value five or greater, tap target creature and opponent controls, put a stun counter on it. So you're going to be busting these things out. And every time, remember, Cascade does cast. So if you hit, if you cast like Apex Devastator and then it casts like some other big ones, this is going to trigger every single time. And you can start locking down someone's board very quickly. Yeah, it'll it'll hurt. That is for sure. Thunderous Snapper. So four, uh, green or blue, you can do for all four. And it is a four four. Whenever you cast a spell with convert of mana cost five or greater, draw a card. Yeah, extra card draw on top of Cascade on top of all the other benefits. Uh, yeah, that's all right. Here's Empath. This is an amazing card in this deck because you will be able to, like, if you hit this on a Cascade, you'll probably be able to cast it right away, and you can just go get anything that's... When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a creature card with mana cost 6 or greater. Reveal it, put it in your hand. There's a lot of times where if you have your things, your key pieces set up already, you can just go get Apex Devastator and use this as, like, a finisher almost. So, yeah. Oof. Zero cost spells. These are super important because you can just cheat them into play right away. Especially when they have things like suspend. Remember, suspend is zero. This is going to ignore the suspend and treat it as a zero cost spell. And that, yeah, gets around all kinds of things. Anyway, soul talisman. Basically soul ring for zero. Inevitable betrayal. Okay. Search your uh, target opponent's library for a creature card and put that card into the battlefield under your control. That player shuffles. So you go steal any creature out of their deck. Hmm. You, it'd help if you knew what there's in their deck, for one thing, but that doesn't take too long to figure out. Uh, Ancestral Visions. Target player draws three cards. That's a pretty big card draw. This is actually something I had to take out in the budget version because this is like well over $3, which isn't bad, but we can do that with other things. I 
put something that will do pretty much the same thing anyway. Starless Agent. Again, we have Cascade. This is our low, one of our low Cascade things where it's 3 CMC. So you're probably going to hit one of those lower CMC things and hopefully get land in the meantime. And Blood Raid Elf is our kind of like 4 CMC, which means Cascade for 3 or less, right? Well plan, so how does this deck play? Step one, ramp, always ramp. Even in this deck, which is made for ramping, we're gonna have ramp. Step two, cascade and cascade synergy. One step, kinda. Step three, our win cons. Mm -hmm. Ramp, Rose Room Treasurer. This is actually only in the budget list. I should put it in my main deck though. Um, First two creatures that enter every turn, you're going to make treasure tokens, and then but the third one, and after that, you get to pay X mana and do X damage to any target you want. Mm, pretty good. Little Talisman we already talked about. Rashmi and Ragavon. Whenever you cast your first spell during each of your turns, exile the top card of your opponent's library and create a treasure token. So basically, when you cast a spell, you're going to exile a card, someone else's card, and create a treasure token. You may cast the exile card without paying its mana cost if it's a spell with mana value less than the number of artifacts you control. This isn't really an artifact deck, so uh, there's a good chance you're not going to be able to use this. Kind of doesn't matter though, right? If you're lucky, you're going to be uh, you're going to catch something that's low CMC. So even that treasure and whatever mana rocks or something you have. You're going to be able to use that. If not, it's not the end of the world either, you know? So, either way, it's mostly about the treasure, right? You want to make treasure. So, yeah. Um, if you don't cast it this way, you may cast it this turn. So, again, you can still cast it, even if you're not casting it for free, right? Uh, try again. Gutsy Explorer. Uh, add a green and a blue. Since mana only cast spells with mana value 5 or greater, which there are plenty of in this deck, or spells with X cost in their mana. I don't think there's X spells in this, but. And then finally, for a blue, you can draw a card and discard a card. Yeah, sure. And Decanter of Endless Water. Mana fixing and endless, like, supply of. One bad thing about having high cost spells is that you might end up drawing more cards than you're able to like shovel out in a, in a given turn. You want to make sure you're not discarding a whole bunch of stuff and that's what this does. Cascade. Maelstrom Wanderer we talked about already. 8 DMC is pretty good for a Cascade and it has two Cascade triggers so you're getting two things for seven or less. Three Come Recluse. Six. For this, uh, zero three, when it, uh, sorry, it has cascade reach, and when it enters the battlefield, put three plus one plus one counters on each of any number of target creatures that enter the battlefield this turn. So you can put a plus, yeah, put three plus one plus one counters on each of any number of creatures. So if this comes in and you've cast, or especially if you have this in your hand, it's amazing because you can like know you're going to cast a bunch of spells or cascade a bunch and get creatures out and then you cast this and then they give them all plus three plus three Whew. i feel like i'm reading that wrong no but three plus three plus three counters on each of any number of target creatures that entered the battlefield this turn so the yeah the only real limit uh limitation there is that they have to have entered the battlefield this turn but you're going to have big swings right going to be cascading a lot which means a lot of stuff coming in very quickly uh, uh, Takashima's protege protege I can say protege again 6 CMC with flash and cascade and enters the battlefield as a copy of any permanent that entered the battlefield this turn so you want to wait until someone else has played something that you want to copy and you're gonna play this right after and make a copy and then Cascade. It's also nice to have a point. You know, you get to keep a bunch of mana open during someone else's turn to make them real nervous. That's always nice. 
Dark Apostle. For three, untap him. Target non-creature spell you cast this turn has Cascade. So you can give any non-creature spell Cascade, which is really useful. Again, the high CMC or the low CMC to make sure you're getting your land. Blood Raid Challenger. And he has five for a 4-3 with haste. But Cascade. Again, that 4 CMC or lower Cascade is quite useful. Also, Escape. So if you want to cast them from your graveyard, you sell three other cards from your graveyard and pay the uh, pay the cost, and then you're going to cast them again, and you're going to be able to Cascade. Cascade Synergy. Aurora Phoenix is a 6 CMC with Flying and Cascade. And whenever you cast a spell with Cascade, if it's in your graveyard, put it back in your hand. So you're just going to have, like, that cycle of uh, Cascade over and over. Now, Nalefesh... Nalefeshni? Okay, I should practice saying things. Five and a red for this flyer? Four, six flyer? Whenever you cast a spell from XL, copy it. You may choose no new copy, or sorry, new targets for the copy. If it's a permanent spell, the copy gains haste and at the end, beginning of your end set, sacrifice this permanent. This is going to have haste. It is only for one turn if it's a permanent, but you can potentially do a lot of damage with that. Direct Dragon Claw. This spell can't be countered. Creature spells can't be countered. And other creatures you control have Trample. Giving everything Trample is just very good. You got a lot of big stuff in this deck, right? Noise Maker. Once again, 5 and it has Cascade. Or 4 in red, I should say. And whenever it enters the battlefield, it deals damage equal to the number of spells you cast this turn to any target. Once again, Cascade does cast them automatically, right? So if you cast like Apex Devastator, and you somehow have a bunch of extra mana, which is possible in this deck, I think, you'll Cascade at least four times, and then you're going to cast... So you've cast five spells altogether, and then you're going to cast Noisemaker number six, and then he's going to enter the battlefield and do six damage, right? To any target. It's a nice little bonus, anyway. The Lost and the Damned. Alright, so when the land enters the battlefield under your control from anywhere other than your hand, you may cast a uh, or, sorry, or you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand. Create a 3-3 three, three red spawn creature token. We've actually got two of these creature generators that every time you something comes in from exile, basically, you're going to be making these tokens, which is going to add up very quickly. Win con number one. So we got Impending Flux and Noisemaker. I think these are almost more like finishers than win cons, but you can foretell this for one red red, which is really, really useful because then you can just wait until it's, you know, beneficial. It has Paradox. Impending Flex does X damage to each opponent and each creature they control, where X is 1 plus the number of spells you've cast from anywhere other than your hand this turn. So if you're doing a whole bunch of your Cascading, which you should be doing, um, this is going to just do a whole pile of damage to everything that you don't control. Again, Apex Devastator and then this. This is only 3 mana, it's not crazy. But that would be... what? Five damage to all creatures and every opponent. So yeah, even that probably won't take your opponents out, but it'll let you just like walk in and smash them, no problem. Noise Marine, we just talked about. Oh boy. Win con number two, War Storm Surge, five and a red. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. That's gonna be pretty good. Whenever you cast a creature spell from exile or a land enters the battlefield under your control from exile, create a 2 2 green wolf creature token. And this is again lost the damage making 3 3s every time. So you can potentially make a 2 2 and a 3 3, and that'll do 5 damage, right? to any target. You can just keep, like, every time you cast anything, you, you, you cascade, if you have these three out, you're going to do five bonus damage per cascade. Again, with Apex Devastator, that's 20 bonus damage. 
or even no it also triggers on land entering from XL so you could do potentially 40 damage do I suggestions okay so this is the final section here where I'm gonna kind of compare my budget my original deck and the budget version so this is more difficult than the last deck since the me mechanic is more niche I think I was able to like reduce the cost quite a bit without giving up too much. Like this is still a very functional deck, the budget version. It's maybe not as like big, uh, you know, it's not as like tricky, I think is maybe what I gave up the most of. Replaceable card. All right, Kodema, the East Tree. This basically lets you take another card from your hand. Every time you cast a spell, you can uh, put a card from your hand into the battlefield that's equal or lesser mana value. So this is kind of like an extra cascade trigger from your hand instead. Otis Cobra is going to make one mana every time a land enters, which I, we replaced this with a Rose Room Treasure, which I think is kind of better because Rose Room Treasure gives you a treasure. Yeah. Which doesn't disappear at the end of that phase. Scroll Rack. This is one where, frankly, it's kind of hard to find something that's as good for a budget so yeah for a, this is an artifact for one and tap XL any number of cards from your hand face down put that many cards from you at the top of your library into your hand then look at the XL cards and put them on top of your library in any way so you basically just get to set up your your deck any way you want and you're probably going to have a good number of cards in hand because of the high casting cost so that's another turning into a kind of advantage where we're going to be able to like set things up to make sure we're hitting those lands whenever we cascade and we know what we're cascading into. All Breaker Horror. So five blue blue for this seven eight with flash it cannot be countered. And whenever you cast a spell, remember cascade does cast. Return target spell that you don't control to its owner's hand. Return target non-land permanent. You uh, to its owner's hand So you can just like bounce someone's board if you start cascading a bunch You're just gonna like move everything out of your way and you can uh, kind of win Wild magic sorcerer first spell you, you cast from XL each turn has cascade So this is just giving you an extra cascade for every cascade or any other way you're casting something from XL You'll have cascade on that as well which is really uh, a nice bit of synergy there, but we had, it's over five bucks, I think, so I had to take it out. Kodama, the East Tree, I actually traded with Bigger on the inside, which I hadn't seen before, and I can't find for a cheap, reasonable price in Korea. Anyway, three, yeah, three, uh, red, green, this is an aura, artifact or land enchantment, and target player, tap, a target player adds two mana of any one color, the next spell they cast this turn has Cascade. So you can turn anything into a mana rock that's going to add two uh, of any color you want. And then if you use it, you have Cascade. Just giving anything another instance. Especially if it already has Cascade, that's kind of even better because then it has another one, right? So Apex Devastator, for instance, you can get it has four Cascade triggers. If Umodi's out, it has five. If you use this to cast, it has six. Six Cascade triggers. Oh. Lotus Cobra. Okay. For one and a green. Uh, we just talked about this, right? Three and a red. For So pricier, but when the first two creatures that enter every turn, you're making a treasure token every time. After that, you can pay X mana to do X damage to any target. So, yeah. Okay, scroll rack. This is one where yeah, we are kind of taken. It's not as good, I would say. We're going to switch with brain surge, draw four cards, then put two cards from your hand on top of your library in any order. So you're drawing four and you're putting two back in any order. Not as good as scroll rack, definitely, but still, it's something. Kind of the same general idea. Oh, Breaker Horror, we're switching with Void Slime. Counter target spell, activated ability or triggered ability for green, blue, blue. 
It's a counter spell that also works in on abilities, which can be very useful. So yeah. Again, hopefully you get this to hand, not to like on your uh, cascade, because it won't really help with the cascade. Wild Magic Sorcerer. Okay, and we are a violent outburst. Basically, this has cascade. It's really what we're looking for is another way to get cascade. Creatures you control get plus one damage until the end of turn. Be, might be useful, but really you just want the Cascade. The low Cascade. Again, very good for hitting those land. Okay, we have Boseju. A Ketra Triome and Training Center in my original. We took these out for uh, Slagwood Bridge that is an indestructible artifact land that um, can create red or green. And then Silver Bluff Bridge, indestructible artifact land or red and then angle pool bridge once again indestructible artifact land why do we have these you might ask and the, oh, sorry that's the green blue so we've got all of our mana covered again they come in tapped but that's what averna does anyway so it kind of doesn't really make a big difference we don't mind things coming in tapped what we do like is indestructible why because we also have cleansing wildfire destroy target land unless it's indestructible its controller may search the library for basic land, put it onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle their library, draw a card. So this is, if you use this, you can target your own land or someone else's. If you want to destroy someone else's land, great. Get rid of that Cabal Coffer or something or target your own bridge. And then, yeah, it cannot be destroyed because it's indestructible, but you're still going to go basically ramp. You're going to be able to ramp, go get another land. And you're also going to draw a card on top of that for only two mana. Very easy to set up on our Cascade. Final thought. So this deck is an interesting one, although it may feel outdated now with that the Discover is a mechanic. Again, Discover is a mechanic now. I think that's why people are kind of not interested in Cascade. but Which makes sense, but at the same time, Averna giving you that, that land. You can potentially just ramp like crazy with Cascade. And that's where it really starts to like kind of be better than Explorer, I think. Yeah, anyway, so the lower CMC ends up being kind of working in your favor when you want to like hit more cards to get more options for lands, right? So that's why it's kind of better. Anyway, yeah. Averna's ramp ability keeps this functional even if there is essentially an upgraded version of Cascade printed now. Definitely, I think it is still, still worth playing. Anyway, take it easy.